I want to talk about the future of technology. And, and that portion of the conversation actually starts in an unexpected place here with your son, Zane. Uh, he was born with cerebral palsy, and you write in detail, very candidly, about your early struggles with this. But it has totally changed your outlook on the world, on technology, on your life. Walk us through that, if you would. Yeah, I mean, Zane uh, was born when I was 29 years old. Uh, and his birth, perhaps more than anything else, has shaped uh, a lot of who I am perhaps today. Uh, especially that was probably one of the more harder parts of writing even the book, to go back and reflect on it in more concrete terms uh, as to what he has taught me. Um, and as a 29-year-old, with, you know, with both my wife and me, we you know, were the only children of our parents. And so when Zane was about to be born, it was all exciting in the house, and we were looking forward to him and the nursery being ready, and whether Anu would get back to her work, or how quickly can she get back to her work as an architect, which she just started. Uh, but of course, that night when he was born, everything changed. He was born uh, because of in utero asphyxiation um, uh, with severe brain damage, which has led subsequently to cerebral palsy. And quite frankly, Todd, I struggled with it. Um, uh, I struggled for it for perhaps multiple years because none of the well-laid-out plans of mine as, a, as, as sort of a, an, you know, a, a mid-level or even an entry-level engineer at Microsoft uh, were all sort of out of the window. I needed to sort of recalibrate, and I for a long time felt like, why has this happened to us and me? And, and then it's only by watching my wife, uh, who even right after recovering from her C-section was driving Zane up and down uh, the bridges here to get him to therapies um, and give him the best shot. And that's what perhaps you know, really got me out of my stupor and said, okay, how, what do I as a father have to do? And over the years, we've been blessed in this community, uh, whether it's the children's hospital, uh, it's the physical therapist, the occupational therapist, the speech therapist, the community that we have now uh, around us. Um, and the connections and the role of technology. Uh, Zane, you know, has gone through many, uh, you know, sort of hardships of you know medical surgeries and what have you. And there was even one incident I remember. Uh, one day I was sitting waiting for him to come out of his surgery room, um, and then all of the equipment around me, uh, a lot of that was Windows, and I was saying, "Hey, it does all better work," um, and um, and you know, it just sort of you know, gave me the feeling of, or the understanding of the responsibility even uh, of a platform company, a technology company, because that's one of the things that's very unique about Microsoft, which is we are in every power grid, we are in every hospital, we are in every critical part of our society and our economy, uh, and we've got to take that responsibility uh, very, very seriously. How has it shaped your views on the accessibility of technology? and making sure that everyone can access the, the power of innovation. And to me, um, my personal life, of course, has been a great influence on how I think about the importance of accessibility. But one of the things that I am seeing inside of Microsoft is this universal design um, and, and accessibility as a real driver of true innovation, uh, and I'll give you a couple of things. One of the apps that we launched recently, which is uses the cutting edge AI uh, in our cloud around computer vision, and gives anybody with visual impairment the capability to see. In fact, Angela Mills, who's a coworker of mine, whom I had worked with very early on as part of my Microsoft career, was telling me this story of how she now can go into our own cafeteria at Microsoft order with confidence because she can see the food, see, read the ingredients, read the menu. She can walk into conference rooms. You know, we have braille readers and what have you, but the, the issue is she wants to walk into the conference room knowing uh, that that's the right one, not barge into something that's not uh, one that she needs to. And she can do that now with confidence. So she is able to fully participate. She's empowered because of AI and we will fully participate. This is an app called Seeing AI. Seeing it's AI. for iOS and Android. You can hold it up to the world, it identifies people, it'll tell you the approximate age of somebody. It's kind of like a, sort of a petri dish for AI technologies. It's really cool. It's really cool, and in fact, we're going to try and even uh, make it extensible, and there are already some extensibility, like it'll recognize currency if you want to pay. It's awesome, it just, you know, it gives people more empowerment who need it. 
Similarly, what we did with learning tools, this is again another very passionate group inside of Microsoft who said, you know, we have some amazing technology around reading, uh, which now mixed with AI can change uh, the outcomes for kids with dyslexia. So now in Word and OneNote, you have learning tools so that, you know, kids or anyone with dyslexia can start, you know, reading faster, better, more comprehend uh, text. Uh, Steve Gleason uh, came to one of our hackathons, and uh, again, a group of passionate people sort of said, what can we do for an ALS patient who has uh, the ability to move their, uh, has gaze, eye gaze, uh, but all of the other muscles can't be moved, but can they communicate? And so we now have in Windows 10, in fact, in the uh, fall creators update, eye gaze as an input mechanism. So I feel one of the things that's being unlocked is this fundamental recognition that it's not just about accessibility as AT technology. In fact, we historically, even at Microsoft, would think of it as, oh, wow, this is something that you do as assistive technology. Kind of a niche. As a niche, as a something that you do on top of having built the product. But the reality is, the one thing that is true in all, for all of us is, at some point in our life, we all will need some help with some sense of ours. That's going to be really the universal truth. So we better design products so that it can help everybody. Uh, and that's what I think we're trying to invoke. And the beauty it is, of it is it's not some top-down thing, quite frankly. It is much more, if you look at our hackathons, uh, but they don't end with just that one week we do. It takes life after that, where product teams are passionate. Uh, and we have a long distance to cover. Uh, but what Cortana can mean for accessibility, what uh, you know, mixed reality can mean for accessibility, these are exciting frontiers, and uh, I think it's going to make us better AI company, a better devices company, a better everything company by sort of focusing in this area.